Glory to God. Hallelujah. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. If you weren't with us earlier, you would have had an opportunity to sit there and spend some time with the little lambs. Amen. Glory to God. You would have been just as happy as I was just to have an opportunity to see them and be with them. Amen. And to see the new ones and enjoy each and every one of them. And I thank God for each and every one of the children. They, they even taught a lesson earlier in the day by themselves. Amen. And, you know, and uh, we had to follow their instructions. And then after that, there was some teaching. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got a message for you today. Amen. But I want everybody to um, take the opportunity to um, listen to the announcements for the day that Lady Sunshine will be bringing forth. Amen. Glory to God. I need you to hear them in their entirety. Amen. So please pay attention. Amen. Amen and amen. Good day to everyone at Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, the official church without walls. Eating your faith and thou will starve. We welcome one and all globally to the official church without walls. We would like to welcome each and every one of you to our many weekly services. We have Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Bible study. Tuesday and Thursday on the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you at 7 p.m. Every other Wednesday, our fun, fantastic fellowship time on the book club for the book that we are reading and the times and dates that we are meeting. Please go to our website www.wordofthelamb.org. That is wordofthelamb.org. And every Friday for Friday, an encouraging word at 7 p.m., where many times we have guest speakers and Bible trivia and so much more. You never know what's going to happen on Friday, encouraging word, but you're always guaranteed a good time. Don't be a part of the Shiva Third Club. And every first Saturday, we have from 12 noon to 1 p.m. First fruit prayer, giving God the first fruit of all that we have. And every Sunday, you guessed it right here, live on Facebook, Zoom, and your favorite social media. The Sunday message Pastor Brian bringing the word of God to the people of God. And at 10 a.m. right here, but it is not televised on audio, on video, through social media, is our precious little treasures, our little lamb church. That is at 10 a.m. every Sunday, teaching the little lambs about the lamb of God. Bring your yeah. little lamb and give them the gift of the lamb of God. And also, we have many more activities we have the international ladies of distinction and we would like you to save the day may 20th 2022 mm -hmm. may 20th 2022 how the year has just passed by we are having our first lady of distinction conference and we welcome each and every one of you to come on by we also have men's ministry and that is bwk brothers with knowledge ironing sharpens iron men sharpening each other in the word of god and fellowship we welcome one and all to come to the ministry also we have so much more and we would like to let you know at this time that you can participate and partner with Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries with your generous giving. We have a text to give, a QR PayPal code. We have a PayPal button right on our landing page at wordofthelamb.org. We have many forms to give. And if you would like to do snail mail, we have 
P.O. Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Again, our address is P.O. Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. We would love to hear from you. Let us know how God has changed and moved in your life. Send us a praise report. We'll praise with you. And if you send us a prayer request, we will pray for you. We are a church that walls. We have prayer warriors in all places, um, duty on all times. So we would love to hear from you. And if you would like to, again, partner with us in many ways, you can do so. Please make your inquiries to word of the lamb at outlook.com word of the lamb at outlook.com we welcome membership inquiries and all kinds of questions and speaking engagements as well we thank you so much and we look forward for you following us so that you'll know exactly what's going on with word of the lamb we may be in a town near you so at this time we thank you and we would like to make three special announcements. Our first announcement is this upcoming Saturday, December 19th, for all Word of the Lamb Worldwide members, we have a meeting after Sunday, December 19th. We thank you for putting that on your calendar. And again, we'd like for each and every one of you to save the date. More information will be coming up soon for our International Ladies of Distinction, May 20th, 2022. And our third announcement, which is extremely exciting. This is for everyone listening to Word of the Lamb globally. Come on by and join us December 31st for Watch Night. We're gonna have a great time and fellowship with one another under the umbrella and presence of God. Come on by. We welcome one and all. It's going to be an exciting time. And again, we thank you for listening. And we will be with you in just a moment. Bienvenidos a Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministry. La Iglesia Oficial Sin Paredes. Dándole a comer a su fe y no dándole a comer a su duda. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Y bienvenidos y que Dios los bendiga. Tenemos muchos servicios por la semana. Tenemos oración martes y jueves a las 7 de la noche. Tenemos estudios bíblicos los lunes a las 7 de la noche. Los miércoles tenemos un club especial en donde estamos leyendo un libro y estamos hablando y discutiendo el libro. También tenemos el viernes palabras de apoyo. La palabra de apoyo los viernes son a las 7 de la noche, en donde muchísimas veces tenemos diferentes predicadores y tenemos juegos bíblicos. Uno nunca sabe qué es lo que va a suceder. El viernes palabra de apoyo, pero todos estamos garantizando un buen tiempo en la palabra de Dios. El primer sábado de todos los meses es el primer fruto de oración entre las 12 del día y la una de la tarde. Y también todos los domingos tenemos las ovejitas más pequeñas, los niños y las niñas, a las 10 de la mañana, todos los domingos, enseñando en nuestras ovejitas más pequeñas de nuestra oveja grande de Dios. También a las 11 de la mañana tenemos el mensaje general con nuestro pastor Brian dando la palabra de Dios a la gente de Dios para este tiempo que estamos viviendo. También tenemos oración global a las 6 de la mañana, 12 del día y las 6 de la noche, de lunes a viernes. Estamos orando en esos tres días, en ese día, todos los días de lunes a viernes por nuestra comunidad global. Y también si usted quiere generosamente dar y es fiel, manifestar su contribución generosamente a este ministerio, le damos la gracia de antemano. Tenemos un texto que es un número de teléfono donde usted se puede registrar y dar su generosamente por el texto. 
también tenemos un botón en nuestra página que es de PayPal y tenemos un QR code para su conveniencia. Le damos las gracias ante manos y que Dios los bendiga a cada uno. We also would like to announce to everyone that we have unity prayer. We will continue to pray for a global community. Would you join us at 6 a.m., 12 noon, yeah. or 6 p.m., Mondays through Friday? We are praying again for a global community, and we welcome each and every one of you to come at one of those times and let us pray for such a time as this. We thank you in advance, and we now turn these services over to our own beloved Pastor Bryant. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Evangelist. I appreciate you. Amen. I hope that each and every one of you heard all the announcements today. Amen. Glory to God. And, and put those into your calendar next week. Amen. Glory to God. Write that down. Amen. Glory to God. Next Sunday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning to all those on Facebook. Good morning to all those on Zoom and all those on the conference line. We Good bless morning. to each and every one of you. Amen. Glory to God, to all the evangelists and all of the deacons and deaconesses and all of the individuals, all of my sisters and brothers all over. Amen. Glory to God. I I, I got a word for you today. Amen. God, God gave me a word. I want to give it to you. Amen. Glory to God. Maybe you'll find yourself within it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, I come before you, Father God, thanking you for letting us get up this morning, thanking you for giving us an opportunity, thanking you for allowing us to be there, thanking you for just being with us, Father. Lord, I'm asking that there'll be less of me and more of you, Father. Lord, I'm asking, Father God, that The words of my mouth, Father God, will be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, I'm asking that it, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness, Father. Father, surely goodness and mercy has followed me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God and Jesus amen. Christ, who is the head of my life. To all of the XMs, meaning Christians all over, and all everybody in their perspective places. Amen. With the highest regard and intellectual integrity, I sit before you this morning to expound and share with you the Rama of the Logo, which means the written and spoken word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First and foremost, Did you bring your sword with you? For those that don't know, the sword is the word of God. Did you bring your Bible or do you have your Bible app? If you do, I want you to turn to Jonah and you can park it there. We are get there eventually. Amen. I um, was sitting down and first and foremost, I want to tell you that God is really good. You see this weekend, I, this week I was going to work, amen, glory to God. And in the midst of the highway, amen, glory to God woman in front of me decided that she was going to put her brakes on and kind of like stop what she was doing in the middle lane of the highway. Nothing wrong with a car, but and I had to swerve to move away from her. And glory to God, God made enough space for me to do that. Amen. For her to be looking at her phone, amen, with her brakes on, causing all kinds of people to turn different directions, amen. So God is always good, amen. He makes sure that he would take care of you, amen. Because the moment that I uh, 
got up, you know, I, man, I, I started to, to praise him and, you know, I, I pray for every single individual that I could think of, amen, and we put them into prayer, amen, glory to God. So my sermon was inspired and by that, that particular thing, but in other conversations that I had going on through the day, amen, and during that weekend. But see, uh, 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 God is so good that he has done so much for us, amen, that it's, it's an amazing event, amen. So the title that I'm giving you today is called Call on Me. Call on me. See, have you ever heard, call me? You know you've been in situations where you've been with people who told you just that, call me. You know that you wasn't going to get any particular thing. They wasn't really meant for you to call them. They just wanted, they just wanted to say something for you. You know, or have you been with someone to say that I've been waiting for you to call? Because some people might know that you need, uh, might be in need of help, but they did not not going to be activated until you call and ask them for help. Amen. And some people have been waiting to be called because they're expecting a call from you. And see, most people, they will help you when you call them. There's a few times in my life where I had to make some calls and needed some help and people came and got me from some different places. I had some that I asked about some things and they told me something totally different and if I was still uh, looking for them to, to help me at that time, I'd still be waiting. And sometimes people will tell you, you know, some things just to be polite. You know, we all been there. Now I'm gonna ask you some questions kind of bring you into some places. See if I can get you to where I'm going to. I, I know you're probably saying, so what's the point you're making past to be? Well, here's my point. But when, when things are going good and the worries are few, are you still calling on the Lord? Question one. Or is it that when you are stressed and worried, Is that when you're calling on the Lord? But God tells us in Psalms 50 and 15, I'll be reading from the uh, English Standard Version and also the King James Version as well today. Amen, glory to God. And he says this in, in Psalms 50, and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. When, we, when you call upon the Lord, he will answer. Are you picking up the right phone? Are you dialing, are you calling the right number? Did you look in the right book? And if you don't know what that book is, once again, I'll tell you that that book is the Bible. And I'm going to tell you this true. If you ask the Lord, you'll get more than what you bargained for. See, Jeremiah 33 and 3 tells us this. See, I want you to understand that 
you sometimes have to do something and he's always, God is always asking you to call upon him. Amen. He is open to you. Amen. Glory to God. But he's waiting for your call. There's been special times when he called on you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. In order to receive some things and get the knowledge that you have and get the stuff that you need to get going on in your life, you need to call, call upon the Lord himself because it is him that's going to give you the things that you need. But some of us take the opportunity sometimes not to go out there and make that call or call halfway and not ask all the questions that we need to ask because we're not sure. Sometimes God is telling us, listen, just ask your questions and just accept it because sometimes the answers that you get, you might not like. Some of us already know the answers. We just don't want to ask the question because we're trying to avoid something. The Lord tells us that he's listening. That means that he's tuned in to what you're saying. That means that he's listening to you in the deepness of the night when nobody else is looking at you, when nobody else is there to Keep an eye on you. And you might even think about the things that you might have done or might be doing. And God is listening to you. God's listening to you. So that means that some of the things that come out your mouth. Oh, I'm there to say that I'm going there you might want to take an opportunity to rethink those things. See, because he says that I, he is listening. Jeremiah uh, uh, 29 and 12 says, then you call, you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. I want to break this little piece down for you. And as you can see, the word says this. The Lord tells us to what? Call on him. And after we call on the Lord, then what? He's telling you that once you call upon him, you got to come. And while you're coming in his direction, pray to him. And while you're praying to him, make sure that you pray from your heart. The reason why I say that is just this, y'all. Sometimes we pray, but we're just doing it as part of a routine. You need to be a little bit more deeper. Are you calling on him? Uh, here's something you need to know. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, the 65th chapter, the 24th verse, before they call, I will answer. 
So before you already have made that call to the Lord, you're, uh, before you have already started to have that conversation, he already answered because he heard you before you even thought about it. While you were thinking about it, he knows it. So that means he's really in tune to every particular part of you. Oh, this might be scary to some people. You know, we have a tendency to think that the things that we're thinking about in our minds can't be heard by nobody but us. But obviously, God is hearing it because before you even make the call, he's already answering it. So he knows if you've been good or bad. Uh, I want to tell you about the fact that he says once again, he says, before you call, I will answer. Why they are yet speaking, I will hear. That means before you even spoke the word, he already heard what you have said. The Lord knows who you are what you are in need of. And all we need to do is to call them up. Have you checked your phone lines lately? I know we've been talking to God and we've been telling God and some of us have even put in our list, you know, we got a, some of us got a list like the kids got a Christmas list. I say that just like this. Sometimes we got that list that Lord, I need, I want, I gotta have, I need to have this. Lord, can you help me? Lord, can you do this for me? Lord, can, well, there's a whole lot of things that you do. What have you done for the Lord lately? Somebody said, well, I went to church. You, you went to church, but the church was, you went to church to hear the word of God. So once again, the church is there to instruct you in the word of God. What have you done for the Lord lately? Each one of us, he has given us some kind of instructions. Have you talked to the ones in prison? Have you fed the home hungry, helped the homeless? Have you checked on the widows, fatherless? Did you do something that wasn't right? Did you fix the problems? Did you go tell somebody you were sorry? Some people are still stuck up in certain things because of something you might have done that you might have to go back and say, I'm sorry for. Sometimes in our lives, we just got to go back and tell some people that we're sorry for some things, even if they cannot remember. If you remember it, then maybe you need to tell them that it's your sorry. Sometimes we got to take the opportunity to get out there because sometimes when you help somebody do certain things, what you're doing is you're opening up for them. Something that it might, be, it might need to be closed. You might be closing the door on something that they can be able to prosper on. I ain't going to get many amens today, but that's all right. It's all right. You see, it's tight, but it's right. 
I, I, I want you to, to know that there's times when you can just talk to God. For some of us, uh, we need to put our hands together to talk to him. Uh, for some of us, we got to get you uh, to your closet or whatever way that you talk to God. Call on him for when you do these things. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 and 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Are you calling on him? The word is call on me. Call on me. Let us go into Jonah, the first chapter. Amen. Glory to God. And let us spend some time here. I know we all know the story of Jonah, amen, but y'all just bear with me, amen, glory to God. I'm going to get you to these two chapters, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm going to set you up for where I am so I can bring you someplace. Promise I'm going to bring you somewhere, but you just got to drive with me, okay? So you got to be the partner, amen, glory to God. You're going to have to sit on the side seat, amen, and you can't be the back seat driver, amen. Glory to God. You're going to have to just listen to this one today. Amen. Glory to God. And call upon him. God needs you to redial your phone number. The word of God. Amen. From uh, Jonah. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, now the word of the Lord came upon Jonah, the son of Ammonite saying, Arise, go to Nivea, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish for the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, everybody on this line know that every, I don't care where you are, you can't move from the presence of the Lord because he's already looking at you all the time. You can't hide from God. But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like a like to be broken then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his god small g by the way and cast forth the water their wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of lighten it of them but Jonah had gone down into the sides of the ship and lay and was fast asleep. All this going on, and he was getting his snore on. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. Uh oh. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Hmm. You know, that statement means a lot. And I'm going to tell you why. A, a person who was praying for their God had to go and wake up God's prophet to pray for his God. And they said unto one, to a fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know 
for whom caused this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. We know this story, so I'm going to get there fast. And they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for woe caused this evil upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence did thou comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the seas and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast, done, hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fleed from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then he then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea might be calm unto us? For the seas wroth and was tempest. And Jonah said to them, take me up and cast me into the sea so that the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode harder to bring to land, but they could not. For the sea wroth and with the temperance against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, and said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. Amen. Two things happen in this thing that I need you to understand. I'm going to bring you this somewhere. This is a different thing, but I want you to understand this. I'm pointing this out, that the man of God, hallelujah, even though he was on the ship, even though they was there and they were talking to him, they, after they were doing all the things they would do, somebody got convinced that they were talking to the Lord and amen. Somebody had an understanding that they were going to talk to God, not the God that they knew, but the God of the heaven. Amen. Great. Right then and there, they was beseeching the Lord with the capital L. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And lay not your innocent blood, but thou, O Lord, has done as it pleases thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him unto the Lord and made vows. Even though we're sometimes tossed back and forth in certain places, God calls us to certain things, and yet we sometimes run away from them. We do not move in the directions that we need to. Sometimes God is calling you to move in an area. Sometimes God is wants you to talk to certain people and you decided that you don't want to do that because you don't put your stubbornness on it and said I don't want to do that particular piece and God says okay I'm, you don't have to do it I'm gonna send somebody to take care of it but while I'm taking care of it I'm going to do something and if I wanted it just to be you to do it I'm going to make it so that no matter how the situation turns out you're going to have to end up doing what's necessary because sometimes we run from the call of God. Or sometimes we call on God. And when he calls on us, we decide to run. But in this situation, what happens was he 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 ran from the Lord. Hallelujah. But he in the midst of that, he made the people who on this um, certain people on the ship. Amen. Start to believe in God that wasn't believing in God. And after they finished doing what they did to need to do and the seas got calm, they not only they not only sacrificed to God, but they made a vow. So that means that they wanted to know that they were going to serve the one and true God and not the one that they were serving before that. So even though he might have not been doing his assignment, he didn't understand that there's always a second assignment that God puts on you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Glory to God. And now I'm going to get to my point, amen, on this particular thing. It says, call me up, amen. Glory to God. We've been in situations sometimes in our lives where we just need to call upon the Lord. Sometimes we can't do it by ourselves. We need the help of God. We need the help of Jesus. We need him all the time, but every once in a while, we need him even more. And he says, call me up. And Jonah says like this in verse 17. 
And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So now only did he get thrown in the water, as we already know, but he was in the belly of the big fish, right, for three days and three nights. But the one thing that Jonah put into his mindset while he was in there, because every once in a while, you got to be in a place where it's real uncomfortable for you. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. There's a spot in your life right now that you feeling real uncomfortable in. You can't be in that same place of comfortability. Sometimes God's got to trouble the water to make you uncomfortable in the situation that you're in. So did you know that something's got to change? Because it's sometimes in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of all your weaknesses, in the midst of the things that you do, the one thing that God is desiring you to do is call him up. It's something about being in an uncomfortable situation where things are hard for you to go out there and the ones who know they believe pick up the phone and say hello i got to talk to you lord and here's a great example you see jonah prayed and he prayed unto the lord his god out of the fish's belly and said, I cry by reason of my own affliction unto the Lord. Lord, I messed up. I'm giving you my version and I'm going to give you his. And I heard and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried, I, and thou heardest my voice. I'm in the midst of a place that's like hell in me. I can't get out. I can't get back in. It ain't nothing gonna happen unless you come and put your hands on it. So right now I gotta let you know, God, that I'm not just asking you for your help, but I gotta let you know I messed up. Lord, I'm calling you to let you know that I made a mistake. See, you have to sometimes go past what you feel and you got to break it down to you. You might be snobbing and writhing and crying and you got all kind of little things going on. You might be in the corner sobbing and crying and talking to God and you have to tell him I messed up. I changed something in me and I need you right now because I ain't nobody here on this particular earth. Ain't nobody here in this universe except you, Lord Jesus, that can help me out of my situation. And isn't it wonderful that you could call upon the Lord and even, <laughs> even, in every situation, you know that your battery ah, that will use on your phone will die. But the battery of your mouth and your heart, as long as you aspire, as long as you live in, you can call upon the Lord. And see, Jonah, he did that. I, I said I cried by the reason of my own affliction unto the Lord. And then he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. But thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas. And the flood compasses around me. Lord, you put me in a place where I know that there's nothing around me. If I go from where I'm at, I'm going to be messed up. And where I'm at right now, I'm messed up. But I know that you can deliver me out of anything. 
Lord, I, I might have been calling from a line that was half open and half not working, but right now I'm calling on the line, hallelujah, that I'm calling for. It says Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what I want. Thou hast cast me into the deep, into the seas, and the flood commence about me, and all the billows and the waves pass over me then I said I am cast out of thy sight yet I will look again toward the holy temple father I'm not in the area where I used to be I might be out of focus but father I got you now even though I'm in the midst of where I'm at and I'm calling upon you because daddy I need your help And the waters, the waters compressed me about, even to my soul. I'm so messed up that I got to call you, that I, 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 I feel pressure, not only in the body or in the mind, but I feel it in my spirit, in my soul. Sometimes you got to go past that thing. Somebody might be feeling like that, but I'm letting you know right now that you can call upon the God and he's going to do some things for you. And if you don't believe me, let's continue to read this. I'm on the fifth verse, second chapter of John. And the waters compressed me about, even to the soul and the depths closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet, yet, thou hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord. My God, when my soul fainted within, I remembered the Lord. There's a time in your life when you just got to understand that no matter what you're going through, the only individual who's going to be able to help you is Jesus. And you're going to say, Lord Jesus, I need your help. And you got to tell him from the death and the bedrock of your heart, the things that you need, the things that you're in, in need of, and the things that you're going to have to put out there to let them know what bothers you, what's scaring you, and what's preventing you from doing some things. And Lord, you got to confess with your mouth everything that you need to do so that he'll know exactly how to fix it. By the way, he already knew what you need to know. He was just waiting for you to tell him so. See, we serve that kind of God that he can do some things. He can turn some stuff around in the midst of some things. And he went to the bottom and it was about me forever yet has brought me up my life from corruption, oh Lord, my God. And when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord and my prayer came unto thee and unto thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsook their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee. And with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. I'm going to read the last verse in a minute, but I, I, I want you to get this understanding. We made some vows to the Lord. Lord, I, I'm going I'm to be with you. Some of us have made some vows. We still got to go back and get right. Lord, you know, if you if you do this, I'm going to do that. If you do this, I'm going to do that. Or if you act this way, I'm going to be this way. I could do this. I could do that. 
We've been there. We've done that. Have you answered them correctly? See, because when the Lord, you call upon the Lord, it says that the Lord already heard you. Didn't it say that? He said, when you, when you call upon me, I'm going to read back that verse of Isaiah. It says, before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. That means God has already heard you. He knows exactly what's going on over there. Mm -mm. And the Lord spake unto the fish. Because the Lord said, I heard you. I was waiting for you to call upon me. And not only did you call upon me, but you called upon me and told me exactly what you needed to tell me that I already knew. And because of that, I'm going to do something for you because I'm not only just the Lord of thy God, but I am also a God of a second chance. No, somebody need to hear that. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. people of God, even when we're messed up, you can call upon the Lord and he will deliver you. Even when you're messed up, you can call upon the Lord and he will deliver you. We're not perfect people. We're striving to be Christ-like. But we're going to fall. And your choices are whether you're going to fall and stay there. Or you're going to fall and get up. If you fall and you call upon the Lord, he's going to send you a helping hand to get you up. And no matter how far you fell, you can always make your way back. But then it takes a fight. It takes your courage. It's going to take you calling upon the Lord more than you know. I want you to remember this. Matthew, the seventh chapter and the seventh verse, English Standard Version. Ask. And will be given to you. Seek. And you will find. Knock. And it will be open. To you. It's never. Too late. To call upon the Lord. It's never. Too late. To call upon the Lord. You might have been. In some stuff. You might have been in some things. You might be trying to get out of, of some situations that's causing you some issues. It is never too late to call upon the Lord. The problem that we have is that we decide sometimes that maybe we could try it a little bit longer sometimes you need to make sure that you just interject to god and guess what if you probably did it from the beginning you wouldn't even have this problem
we call ourselves sometimes being grown and we can handle up some things. But I'm going to let you know right now, I'm not handling nothing without God. I'm going to call him up. I'm going to pick up the phone and say, Jesus, I need your help. I got a situation going on. I know I'm going to walk in this direction, but I need you to, to help me. And if I'm moving in the wrong direction, Lord, give me something to let me know I'm not going to move there. But I'm going, I'm going to walk in this direction, but I, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in the Lord. See, Matthew, the sixth chapter tells us that we have to be a certain way. It also lets us know one thing in the Matthew sixth chapter. It says that... Um, In order to communicate with God, somebody wanted to know how to communicate with him. If I'm going to call him up, if I'm going to come to him, if I'm going to pray, I need to know how to pray. But my sisters and brothers, can all tell you on this line the basis of how to pray. The Bible tells us in Matthew, the fifth cha sixth chapter, the fifth verse, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites where they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, ah, this is Jesus talking to you. He said it again. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Hold on. The Bible says that the Lord sees you even when you're doing things in secret. So that means that you are being seen by the Lord. Hmm. I just want you to understand that sometimes you being seen by the Lord means it's just this. You're being seen by God. So that means the things that you're doing that you think that nobody else sees you, God is looking at you. And if you know you're doing something that ain't right and ain't of God, you know that God is looking at you. And now that you know that he's looking at you, why do you want to do something that's not of God in the sight of God? Mm. Somebody say, ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but pray in your room, shut the door and pray to God. For is a secret for your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask. Isn't that what is said in Isaiah? We're going back to Jesus talking to you in Matthew, 
but he's also telling you what it says in Isaiah. God knows what you need before you ask. But in order for you to activate God, he said, I need you to ask because you got free will. And I think I said this to one of the sisters out there. We had a conversation. I said just this. I said, and the reason why we're in certain areas of certain things and we don't get stuff done is because we we're in our free will. And sometimes we won't let God in because of our own free will. But the moment that we move back and we call upon him, you invited him in. So that means now you done gave a little bit of authority to him that says that I can go ahead and do what I need to do. But the moment that you call upon God, he's saying that means that you're moving. Your will is not toward your way, but it's moving toward mine. So let me show you what I can do. How many times in your life have you said, won't he do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. See, now we're getting the instructions on what we shouldn't do so we can know what we need to do. It didn't say pray all the time this prayer. It said pray like this. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others, their trespasses. Your heavenly father will forgive you. But, as the Bible said, but, as the Bible said, if you do not forgive others your trespass, neither will your father forgive you of yours as well. I started off with a question. I'm going to ask that question again. Have you called on the Lord? Are you using the same line? Are you picking up the right phone? Are you calling the right number? Are you looking in the right book? The Lord needs you to know that you can call on him at any time. And I know that you heard this and I know that you know this, but you can call on him for the things that you're even having the most difficultness with and even the things that you're most happy with. Because sometimes you can just call upon the Lord just to say, Lord, I thank you because this was such a wonderful day. We call upon God when we're in the times of worry, when we should also call upon him when we're in the times of victory.
you might have a problem today. No problem. You might have a problem today. Where your situations might be acting a certain way. You might have a problem with somebody, with yourself, with your bills, with your home, with your children, with your job, with your cars. You might be at a point where everything seems to be falling out around you. You know that phrase that you keep hearing in the back of your head, if it ain't one thing, it's another. But then we have to learn to call upon the Lord. And we have to learn that they, we have to not only call upon them, but evangelist hooks, we have to learn to wait on him. Isn't that right? And I think there's a scripture that says that they that wait upon the Lord. Right, Amen. Shall renew their strength. Mm. They should mount up like eagles. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I believe in this, y'all. Yeah. I'm coming to a close. That we need to call upon the Lord even now, even more. We see the problems and the things that are out there. We're not going to ignore that the world is not in the best shape of things. I'm not talking about the world that's made by God, but I'm talking about the people of the world and the things that are going on in there. There's droughts, there's uh, COVID, there's new variations in it. Um, there's individuals around me, there's stuff that's going on all around. There's problems happening. There's tornadoes going through and tearing up so many things from Illinois to, to, to Kentucky and people and loss of life and so much devastation. There's uh, places where people can't even drink the water because the jet fuel that was there has leaked into it. And now everything has that same poisonous thing into it. There's, there's droughts in places and lakes that are going up. There's places where they're skiing, but they have no snow. We have all these environmental things happen around us. But if I'm not mistaken in um, I, I, I want to be correct. Amen. Glory to God. But um, Second Chronicles tells us just this. If my people the 14th chapter, who are called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? Pray. In order to pray, you got to call upon the name of Jesus. You got to call upon the name of the Lord. So you got to call him up and you got to seek his face that means you got to come to him and you got to turn from your wicked ways, which means you got to stop doing the things that you think you're doing, even in secret. He said, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. The key to what's going on right now 
I just gave you. It don't take a whole bunch of people to get some things started. If I'm not mistaken, God had one prophet tell something it wasn't going to rain. And three and a half years later, he came back and told them it was going to rain again. If God is blessing you, amen. If he's overflowing on you, glory to God. If he's moving in your direction, thank you, Jesus. And you're calling him up, glory to God. Keep calling. Maybe for those who will call God up on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, call him up also on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday. And then come on the day of worship and bring in some thanksgivings. Meaning your mouth full of praise. For those who have not called him at all. It's time to pick up the phone. The songs always tells us that Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. But you know, you are required of God to do something as well. For if he's helping you out, you have to turn to turn to alert somebody else and help them out. You might have to teach somebody something different. You see, you got to be able to not only call him up and call upon him and call upon me, as he says, but when he calls upon you, you need to be able to hear him and you got to be ready to answer. For those who are on the line, whether you're on Facebook, conference line, or on Zoom, if you're desiring to take the opportunity to call upon Jesus so that you can get to know him so much more better, so that you can know that I've got a savior who's trying to save me, and I just need to have the will to want to be saved. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? If you're on the Facebook and you're desiring to be saved, our number is 1302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. Call us on our conference line and we will get in touch with you. We will walk you through. Amen. And here's what we do here at Word of the Lamb Ministry at Church Without Walls is that we will not leave you alone to fend for yourself, but we will walk you with you and walk you through everything that you will need and nurture you if you. You like and 
when you're ready to move in any direction, whether it's with us or wherever, you can go and do your thing because now you're prepared. For those of you who is desiring that you have lost something, dropped the ball, messed up, thought nobody could see you, but the Lord sees you. Remember, he sees you in your secret places. Then if you know that you know God, but you're desiring to be forgiven and know what he asked you. You can't ask me. I'm not here to forgive you, but you got to ask the Lord. Repeat after me. Father God, I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Father, I ask you right now in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, that you will forgive me of everything that I have did, done, said, or even thought. Father, I'm asking you right now, God, that you will try me one more time. Wash me in your blood. Make me white as snow. Lord, I'm asking you that you will cleanse me and remove from me all things that aren't of you. Father, I'm asking you right now, God, that you will hold me in the palm of your hand and that you would open up every door that needs to be opened. And Father, I'm asking you, Father God, that you will allow me to walk through the ones that I need to walk to. I thank you for being a God of a second chance. And Lord, I give you honor. I give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And for those that are on the line, hallelujah. And those who are desiring a church home, you can give us a call as the woman of God has put out there once again. 1302-202-1110. Use conference code 940-792. Amen. And give us a call and we will be with you. Amen. I want you to know that if you desire to belong or, or have an opportunity to to want to be in church home, you should always find out what all believe, who what they believe in every church. Amen. No matter what church you're going to. If you want to know what we believe, Father God, hallelujah, you can go on our, our Facebook page. Uh, excuse me, you can go on our, our web page, www.wordofthelamb.org. We have a page called uh, What We Believe. Come in and, and read what we have. For those who have read what, the, our, our, what we believe and you agree with it, amen, glory to God. If you're desiring to become a member, Amen. The doors are open. I'm asking you, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, if you're desiring 1302-202-1110, use conference code 940-792. Amen. That is our conference number. Amen. Glory to God. That's where you can reach us at. Amen. If you're desiring prayer, use that same number as well. Hallelujah. Conference code number is 940-792. Telephone number is 1302-202-1110. Use that number for prayer. If you're desiring prayer, amen. Go up on there. We will pray for you and with you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I have done what you have asked me to do. I preach the word that you have brought forth through me. I have called on all the invitations, Father. 
I ask for those who desire to know you, Jesus. I pray for those who have dropped the ball, Father. We had sent out an invitation Lord, for those who are desiring to be closer and work with us. But Lord, I almost forgotten that even if you're desired to be around us because you haven't been at your church home and you need a place to fellowship, then we can keep you on watch, which is one of the things that we do where we can Talk with your church and let them know that we're watching you until they have an opportunity to get back to your church home. And I've seen a lot of people who have been around and some people have stayed with us, amen, because they made this their church home. Glory to God. And amen. We're taken from the youngest to the oldest too, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, I've done what you asked me to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. For those that are desiring to be on the line, amen, glory to God. I'm going to soon let you go. I just want to let you know one more time, if you're desiring for prayer, one three zero two two zero two one 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 zero. Use conference code nine four zero seven nine two. The woman of God has got it up there for you. She lets you know what's going on. Make sure you be with us next week. Amen. Glory to God in the name and authority of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, we ask you all, Father God, that you move in every direction, that you will henceforth now and forevermore be with us, God. Rule and abide with us, Lord. And Father, what we say to one, we say to all. What we say to one, we say to all. Watch and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Glory to God. For those that are on Facebook, God bless you. We hope you have a really good day. And if you desire to want to come in and in, in, in need, in need a prayer, please give us a call. God bless you, uh, Sister Britt, Brother brother Presley. We, we, we appreciate you for being on the line with us. Thank you, Sister Morales. Thank you, Sister Bridget. Thank you, Sister Gwen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deacon Anita and Steve and Deaconess and, uh, Steve, Anita. Hey, thank you, Evangelist Outlaw, Evangelist Strong evangelist hooks. We thank you, each and every one of you. Amen. Glory to God. And for those that were on the line with us, amen. And all the little lambs that were here this morning, amen. And for those that are on Facebook, we truly are dismissed. If you desire to to uh to, to fellowship with us for a little while, you can always give us a call. As you know, the number 1302-202-1110. We'll be on here for for a little bit, I would say another 15 minutes or so, so I'll be at least until 1245, I'll be on this line. In the midst of all that, you are, uh, all those on Facebook, you are truly dismissed. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.